All right, welcome back. So um, this is continuing the short course for time domain thermoreflectance um, from fundamentals to operational details. Um, in this um, segment, I want to talk about um, polarization optics. This is primarily for people who haven't worked a lot with laser optics before. Um, I would say that most people who've worked with laser optics for a long time would probably not need to watch a video like this. Um, but I would like to do is just talk about the basic concept of polarization as it pertains to time domain thermoreflectance, but also just more generally. Um, there'll be a whole series of these videos that are should all be fairly short. I just want to talk about what polarization is and how it's exploited commonly um, for laser optics. Um, so um, we'll talk about some different types of polarization devices, such as a polarizing beam splitter, um, different types of wave plates, and how to combine them to do useful things. Um, I'll also talk about some less common polarization optics that occur in time domain thermoreflectance, such as um, Faraday isolators, um, which are essentially devices that only allow light to pass in one direction. And I'll talk about um, something that's very important for time domain thermoreflectance, an electro-optic modulator, which is basically um, a high allows us to do our high speed um, switching of our laser. So um, I'll talk about how all of these devices work in this series of videos. So um, what is polarization? What are we even talking about here? Um, now, I, I think that most people at least qualitatively know that light is basically just an oscillating electromagnetic wave. You may, okay, what does that mean? It means that, you know, uh, you can think about light as an electric field and a coupled magnetic field. So an, an electric field whose um, strength or whose, you know, uh, amplitude of the electric field varies sinusoidally both in space and in time. So if I'm at the same location um, and I look at what happens over time, an electric field will oscillate up and down. And if I, at a particular time, move along some path, I'll see that the strength of the electric field varies sinusoidally in a particular direction. Okay, so um, the direction that you're traveling, so whatever length um, I'm moving along, let's call that Z, um, I have an oscillating electric field that, you know, um, so points along, so it has a vector direction, so the electric field actually points perpendicular to the direction that the light or the wave moves. Um, so like the electric field points, let's say, up um, if the wave is moving into the page or it points, um, let's say, to the right if the wave is moving into the page. Um, but um, it, it's a, so the electric field's um, amplitude or it, it, Basically, the only real requirement is that the electric field point perpendicular to the direction of travel. Um, and so, it, but um, they don't necessarily have to be in phase one with one another. If I'm thinking about X and Y as, you know, in the page and Z as into the, uh, let's start again. So if X and Y are directions that are on the plane of a page and Z is a direction into the page, then you know the there can be an electric field vector whose amplitude points anywhere in the plane of the page, but the X and Y directions, say, wouldn't necessarily have to be in phase with one another. Um, and so I've sort of tried to draw some pictures of that um, beneath. So um, if it turns out that the X and Y directions um, of the vector are in phase, that's called linearly polarized light. So that would be like the picture that's over to the left. Um, so, you know, actually the way I've drawn it there, that might be, let's see, X, Y, Z. Um, so if Z is into the page then I guess what I would what I'd draw is purely um, X direction would be the left picture that's over there. Um, but if the X and Y directions have um, different phases, then um, you might have light whose X you know, phase is, let's say, 90 degrees out of phase. It could be 90 or it could be any other phase. Out of phase with um, the Y directions, you know, um, portion of the electric field. And in that case, it's called circularly polarized light. 
why is it called circularly polarizing? It's basically because, I don't know if I can see my mouse here, but you know, as you move along this direction, at any point I can like add X and Y vectorially, and at one point in space it might point in the X direction, at another point in space the total vector might point in the Y direction, and you'll see that like the direction that it travels actually traces a circle as you go down um, in the Z direction. Um, similarly, you can have more complicated situations. Um, so elliptically polarized light is when they're 90 degrees out of phase, but the two amplitudes aren't the same. And so there are lots of different situations that come up. Um, the one that comes up the most for what we're gonna deal with is linearly polarized light, which just happens to be the simplest to deal with, um, where um, both the, you know, what, whatever the direction of travel is, the electric fields in the perpendicular directions happen to be in phase with one another. That's called linearly polarized light. And so they could be along any particular, you know, X and Y direction, but in general, we're gonna be working with linearly polarized light. Um, 